It's on. Well, I thought I might start out with a story, if that's okay with you. A um, few months ago, we got a phone call from a friend, and he wanted to come over to the office to chat with my business partner, Robert and me, about some ideas he had for switching from being an employee to being self-employed. And his name was, is Norbert, and he's a really smart guy. He was um, perfecting and tweaking uh, production processes at factories and big companies, and he thought, hmm, maybe I can do better if I start working for myself. So he came to the office, and we chatted for like a few hours, bouncing ideas off. And he came really well prepared. He, he had designed his own logo, and he had a website mock-up made in PowerPoint. And uh, well, at the end of the day, the main tip that we had for him was, please, please hire a professional designer to do your logo, your corporate identity, and your website for you, because you know that'll make all the difference. And we even uh, introduced him to Bjorn. Bjorn is uh, sitting over there. He's a, a brilliant freelance designer. And he does all kinds of things from uh, designing logos and co corporate identities, but also photography and making websites. And of course, he uses WordPress. So um, now imagine for a moment being in Norbert's shoes. He, he went from a secure job to unsecurity in his new freelance occupation. But he has a wife and two kids, he has two cars and a mortgage, and he doesn't even know if and when he will be hired again. And now he gets asked to take 2,500 euros out of his savings account, his life savings, his security buffer, and to invest it into this logo design and his website. Imagine how that conversation went with his wife that evening. <laughs> but Bjorn took this budget and he split it up in 1,500 euros for the design part, for the, for the corporate identity, including the, the cost of printing stuff and, and everything, which left 1,000 euros to create a website. And that brings me nicely to the subject of my talk. How can you do small WordPress projects profitably? Well, I have some pointers for you. I could talk about this all day, <laughs> but I have just some quick pointers for you, and then I'll be out of your way. The number one thing is, I believe, a problem that all freelancers face, regardless of their occupation, and that is the things that happen before and after you do the thing you're really good at. Getting projects lined up new projects lined up. That's a, pre a major problem often, the sales part. And then the second thing is what happens after is getting the money, doing the invoicing, doing the taxes, doing the accounting. So my, my tip for you is this, please, please hire someone to do the accounting for you. They'll probably take one or two hours a week max, and it'll take you at least double, and it'll take you out of your flow. So. That's an important uh, improvement. The second one is be clear about your process. Be clear up front to any prospects or customers the way you work. Put it on your website. Put it in a PDF you email beforehand. But make it really clear how you would like to work. Because if you do a small WordPress project, it needs to be very, very efficient. And the customer needs to understand his or her role in this process. So you could even do uh, one or two review rounds uh, included in your, in your process. But if you do, then uh, make a, an email or something with a few bullet points of the improvements the customer wants to make, and then have the customer email you back to confirm that if you do these five or 10 things, the customer will be satisfied. That will uh, prevent things from keeping going over and over and over again, uh, adding more work to the project. Third point is be clear on your pricing. Um, it's okay to have an hourly, way, uh, hourly rate, but um, you could also do a few packages because you're clear about your process. You can do like three packages 
And you can include, for instance, copywriting. Will, will your customers do the copywriting uh, themselves, or will you hire a copywriter, a friend of yours who is also a freelancer? That makes a difference in price, of course. Um, maybe will the customer provide the images, the photos, or will you use stock photos, or will you hire um, a friend of yours who is a photographer and send them over to the customer to make pictures? It all depends on what the price is, but you m must be extremely clear what's in each package. And then you can have, for instance, three hourly rates. One is your normal hourly rate for normal work that you can schedule at your own discretion. The other one might be a drop this, drop everything now, this is an emergency hourly rate, which could be higher. And then you could also think about selling a prepaid pack of like 10 hours at a discount. The fourth point is embrace the 80-20 rule. You know, getting 80% of the result with 20% of the time or effort. And I know this is really hard for creative people because creative people have great difficulty accepting something that's only 80% good. You know, they, they would like everything to be just perfect. And that's a trap because if you go down that path, you will spend hours and hours and hours extra making it just a little bit better but it'll, it'll be hours that you cannot bill or that will be outside of one of the packages you sold. So embrace the 80-20 rule. Number five is find the tools that allow you to work really fast because your customer may have seen a website that's 10,000, maybe 15,000 euros, and then they come to you and say, oh, I would like you to make this, but my budget is 1,000 euros. Well, in order to pull that off, you need tools that allow you to make beautiful websites really fast. So research them and set them up and use the same ones all, over, all the time. Second point, uh, sixth point is save time with the setup. I mean, if you look at it, what you're doing is you should look at it as like a, a production line or a process that you use over and over and over again. And such a process of course, the outcome is unique every time, but the process is the same. So you can perfect the process, and it starts all with the setup of the website and the tools you need. So if you research some tools that you like, then make sure you can set them up really quick and use them over and over again. Seventh point, save time during the delivery of the website. You know, when you create a beautiful website with these, all these tools and WordPress and WordPress admin and, and plugins and stuff, then when you hand over the website to the customer, you also hand over the tools with the, with the website. But that's where the problem starts because most customers, they don't understand these tools. So it would be wise to select tools that your customer may understand, that your customer can work with as well. Um, and then my final point is try to upsell a maintenance plan. That's a really good way to do small WordPress projects profitably. Um, you can have several maintenance plans. Like, for instance, you could do uh, one for 29 euros a month where you say, I will do uh, backups and updates once a month for 29 euros a month. A second one could be 49 euros, where you say, okay, I'll do the backups and the updates, and I also will be available for you for questions. Again, that's being really clear up front of, on what's to be paid and what's included and what's not. And then the third one may be, for instance, 89 euros a month, where you say, I do backups, updates, and one hour work on your site on average per month. Um, these three plans you should offer as a monthly payment, and then if they pay upfront for a year, you can give them a discount, because you will save time on invoicing and stuff like that. Um, this will, if you do this, this will give you some continuity in your cash flow. You will know upfront, next month I have 
so much revenue coming in anyway. Um, and as the more projects you do, you build up this uh, recurring revenue. Uh, it also helps you plan the maintenance of the sites of, the, of multiple customers very efficiently. And most importantly, you keep the relationship with your customer going. And you can try to upsell more and more services of your own. For instance, uh, during holiday seasons or Christmas or special events. And you can even sell them other people's services that you can take a cut from. So to wrap things up, this is my talk. Um, my name is Chris Vermeulen. I'm one of the founders of SwiftySide. SwiftySide is a tool that helps with a lot of this stuff, uh, making it easier for you. And it's free and it's in the repository. Thank you. Thank you.